On this day, grace's breath shatter the shutters of our hearts. On this day, we stepped out of our fears to welcome the new life gifted to us. Here in the midst of our siblings of every age and race, place, may our frozen souls be inflamed by justice's spirit. As we catch a glimpse of the dreams of those around us, as we listen to the voices of the oppressed in every language. In the days to come, may we speak of God's love and the Spirit's peace for all, so that people will find a community awaiting them, even for those rejected by everyone else. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And then our psalm for tonight is Psalm 29, and here's a paraphrase. Like a corsage, we pin praise to your jacket, our God. We come and lay our thanks for your goodness in your lap, for you have kept a close eye on us throughout this day. As you turn on the porch light, you call us in from chasing the fireflies and trying to put them in a jar. As you wash our backs in the bathtub, you sing us silly songs you make up. Like a trained actress, you know how to project your voice through the corridors of every galaxy, but it is your whispers of hope that make us turn from foolishness to race home into your arms. Your words are like a flashlight that shows us the way. Your laughter wakes up those who have fallen asleep from boredom. Your calls to justice for every person shakes even the most progressive from their apathetic attitudes. You sing love songs and trees begin to dance a waltz. You offer lullabies and the littlest ones coo their version of glory. You open the floodgates of hope that it will rush through our cities, giving grace to the vulnerable, joy to those who are brokenhearted, peace to all who need healing. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And then our first reading for tonight is from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, beginning with the last part of the third verse and reading through verse 13. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. i mm-hmm. 
Then our second reading for tonight is from John's Gospel, the seventh chapter, reading verses 37 through 39. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. Today in the life of the church was the day of Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit, to those who are gathered in that upper room and then taken out into the world, out into the streets of Jerusalem where the gospel was spoken and every person of every language could understand what the disciples were saying as they shared the good news. That's the familiar reading that most of us are aware of for Pentecost Sunday, the great account from Acts 2, where at the end of the preaching of Peter, 3,000 people were baptized. It points to great excitement. But what happened after that? What happens when night comes and all the excitement dies down? What happened the day after Pentecost, the week, the month, the year, and so on. While the book of Acts continues to tell about the history of the early church, there just isn't that sense of that another moment like that coming along. And yet, how do we live? How do we live after Pentecost? It used to be that once Pentecost and then Trinity Sunday were done, the rest of the seasons for the next four or five months were known as the time after Pentecost. Now it's become ordinary time. In some, it was the seasons of creation. But it's a reminder that we've relegated Pentecost to a holiday, to one thing that we experience during the year and then we take down the banners, we extinguish the candles, we take off the red that we chose to war on today, and then we get on with life. In a sense, Paul, in writing to the Corinthians, talks about life after Pentecost, what it's like after the Holy Spirit comes down upon people, a community, a church, whatever. It's not always dramatic. Sometimes it's just revealed in ordinary things. Like when a visiting minister shows up and reminds the people that it is the day of Pentecost and they haven't done anything to prepare, to decorate, to reflect that. And suddenly everybody pitches in. And in a few moments time, the sanctuary is transformed 
into colors and artwork that reflects Pentecost. Sometimes it happens when a young mother with two children comes in and sits in the very back of the church. And as he, as the minister stands there and leads the worship, she can't help but notice the young mother huddling with her kids and just sitting there softly crying in obvious distress. And at the end of the service, a number of people go up to the young woman and talk with her. And then they come over to the minister and share with her the fact that this is Katie and Katie has an abusive husband and Katie doesn't know what to do. The children are hungry. They haven't been bathed in days. And suddenly they go over to one of the members' houses that is right next door and they begin to counsel Katie and someone takes the children and bathes them and feeds them and they work with Katie until some months later she's able to leave her abusive situation and move to another state to start a new life, to go to college, to remarry, to remarry and get a job as a teacher. It's people, Paul says, using their gifts. Yes, some were given gifts like ministers and elders and deacons and officers in the church, but all of us are gifted by the Spirit. Some of us have the gift of hospitality. Some of us have the gift of making the perfect cup of coffee. Some of us have the marvelous listening ear. Some of us have the ability to fix a car that's broken down for a family that's traveling for a funeral. We're all gifted. And so what Paul reminds us of is after Pentecost happens and everything is put away, we continue to be spirit-filled people. We continue to be gifted people, people that can share those gifts, our lives, our faith, our hope, our love, our joy with others, simply by living every day as if it was Pentecost and we were called to leave our homes and to go out into the world, to go out into our neighborhoods, to go out into the streets and share and speak and sing and live the good news. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. with with
which the soul will long shall far out pass the power of human telling. For none can guess its grace till he Let us pray. <clears throat> Give us just a spark on this day, imaginative God, to kindle our smoldering apathy until we burst into bonfires, to melt all the injustice which threatens to consume the world. Give us just a word this day, poet of Pentecost, that we might be the voice of those dispersed by fears, that we might proclaim the good news to all we would meet. Give us a cool breeze this day, shattering spirit, stirring and shaking us until we become a storm of hopes to clear the despair from all our neighborhoods and lands. Give us your heart this day, O God. As we lift up our prayers, Prayers of remembrance of all the wonders of this day, the beauty of creation, the gift of friends, the comfort of a few quiet moments, the laughter of friends and neighbors. And in the silence of these moments, we would offer up our prayers of thanksgiving for your presence in our life, O God. And we would lift up our prayers on behalf of our world, our communities and nations, our families and friends and neighbors. We pray for communities of faith. We pray for those who seek to live out their life, offer their gifts to others in so many different ways. We pray for the United Reformed Church at the national level, we pray for all the churches, the communities of faith, the people represented here as they seek to offer their lives to others. We pray for places in the world where there is pain and heartache, suffering and loss. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine. We pray for those affected by weather, by ep economic difficulties. We pray especially this night for the Reverend Martin Ferris recovering from surgery, for the Reverend Cecil White and his recovery from surgery, for the Reverend Nigel Atkinson, for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery, for Father Andy Monia's parish priest. We pray with the Reverend Claire and Reverend Brian Davison for their daughter Susie. We pray for Pray with Liz for her great nephew, Ryan, and for her daughter, Emma, as well as Emma's young son, Leon. <clears throat> we pray for Cheryl, as well as for Prince and the family as they care for her. We pray with Andy for Mike, his dad, and continue to give thanks for the ongoing care that are that give, are give, is given to Mike by Liz and Ruth. We pray with Irene for John. We pray with a young friend of mine named Becca, whose mother died yesterday from dementia. We pray for someone who's fallen and broken their hip. We pray for those who travel. We pray for all those who grieve for the passing of loved ones, especially those who grieve for the Reverend Tony Jones, in particular his wife Hazel. For those who grieve for the Reverend Michael Forster, especially for his wife, Jean. We pray for those who grieve for the Reverend Stan Crane, 
especially Pete, Jenny, and the extended family. And we pray for those who grieve for John Davison, especially Jean, Brian, Claire, and the family. And in the silence of these moments, we offer up those prayers that we carry in our hearts. Give us yourself this day, God and community, holy and one, even as we pray, as we are taught using in our own language, format, words, tradition. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. And now may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the silent mountains, the peace of the singing stars, and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you now and forevermore. Amen. And may you rest in peace this night.